Hi, high school um, class. So this is our last SCASA lesson. Um, and before we get into our new topic, let's just review um, from our last lesson. So in our last lesson, we talked about the harmful effects of marijuana use on the brain and body. So what is the mind or the name of the mind altering chemical in marijuana? Okay, so it's THC. Okay, so THC um, is introduced into the body and it blocks the brain's messaging system. So let's review um, the brain functions that are affected by THC. Okay, so the brain functions that are affected are your thinking, your judgment, your reaction time, your motor activity, appetite, motivation, sensitivity to pain, and coordination. So today we are going to, um, in our last SCASA lesson, we're going to be talking about two more classes of powerful drugs. So we're going to be talking about street drugs and prescription and over-the-counter drugs. Um, you'll see that um, OTC uh, stands for over-the-counter. Some people think that um, abuse of prescription and over-the-counter drugs is less risky than using street drugs. So before we talk about these drugs, let's um, start by talking about risks. How would you define a risk? Okay, so a risk is a chance that you take. A risk is a chance of something going wrong, including the possibility that damage or loss will occur. Can risk taking be beneficial? Yeah. So it can be beneficial if the risk is not too dangerous, um, you might uh, try something new, um, a, some, a safe activity. Um, you might learn something new. You might meet someone new. And you might gain experience, experiences to prepare you for future challenges. Okay, so if the risk is reasonable and doesn't present a real danger, it can push you out of your comfort zone, right? To try something new or something you were afraid to do. Um, and taking risks um, and healthy risks can boost your confidence. Okay, how about um, risk-taking um, and how, how it can be dangerous? Okay, so risk-taking can be dangerous um, because of the potential danger or other negative consequences of the activity. Okay, if, if it's a dangerous activity, um, it's gonna lead to negative consequences. Um, you could harm yourself or you could harm others. So how do you identify a reasonable risk? Okay, let's um, look at the, the criteria um, to determine whether a risk is reasonable or unreasonable. So a reasonable risk is something that's safe, legal, healthy, supports your goal achievements, and helps you learn something new. Whereas an unreasonable reasonable risk is illegal, okay? And it can cause you harm and it's unhealthy. It hinders your goals and has unwanted consequences. All right, so is introducing yourself to someone new um, a reasonable risk or an unreasonable risk? So let's look at that. So what are the potential benefits of introducing yourself to someone new? Um, well, if you take the risk to introduce yourself to someone new, you could make a new friend and begin a great relationship. Okay, well, what are the uh, potential negative consequences of introducing yourself to someone new? Well, you could be rejected, right? Um, but the, and the person might not like you, but there aren't really many negative consequences of making an introduction. Uh, but you do be, face the possibility of rejection and, and meeting someone new new who doesn't think much of you. Okay, that can happen. Uh, for most people though, the uh, potential benefit of making a new friend and building a lasting friendship far outweigh the possibility of rejection. So this is an example of, an, of a reasonable risk to take. Okay, how about taking up an extreme sport like snowboarding or bungee jumping? Is that a reasonable or unreasonable risk? Um, well, most likely that's a reasonable risk, okay? So there is a chance of injury in those two activities, 
but the the safe or with the safety measures available, um, you're you're going to still have the potential to have fun um, and ex and to experience that excitement or that thrill. Um, so I I would say that this is a reasonable risk, right? It's safe, it's legal, um, and um, it it will help you to have a new activity, right? You're learning something new. How about admitting that your opinion is different from the people that you want to be accepted by? Okay, what do you think? How about reasonable? Reasonable. Okay, so the negative consequences are not dangerous, right? Um, sometimes you have to take a chance and share your uh, opinion when others um, don't share, share their opinion. All right, so you have just as much um, of a right to, um, to share your opinion as anyone else, okay? Um, so that's a reasonable risk, okay? How about taking illegal drug, street drugs for the feeling of excitement or danger? Well, this is unreasonable, right? The negative consequences are far greater than the benefit of excitement. Um, it's illegal and it's unsafe. So. How about, um, you know, and there are far uh, better, safer ways to add excitement to your life, okay? And like in the example we talked about, like snowboarding or bungee jumping, a safe and legal activity. How about the misuse of prescription drugs? So is taking someone else's prescription drug to find out what would happen? Is that a reasonable or unreasonable risk? Well, it's unreasonable. So the negative um, consequences are far greater than the benefit of satisfying curiosity, right? So misusing any drug is dangerous and unreasonable. So what comes to mind uh, when I use the term street drugs? Okay, examples of street drugs are cocaine, heroin, ecstasy, and meth. Why are they called street drugs? That's right. These drugs are called street drugs because they are not made in a li licensed laboratory and are only available illegally. Street drugs like cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamines are powerful sub substances that are very harmful to your body. These drugs do not have legitimate uses in medicine. So most teens agree that using an illegal street drug is an unreasonable reasonable and unhealthy risk. Prescription and over-the-counter drugs have legitimate uses in medical treatment. Okay, however, these powerful substances are dangerous if used incorrectly or abused. In fact, misused prescription drugs and uh, some over-the-counter drugs have similar health risks to those of street drugs. Um, so this is why access to prescription drugs is regulated by the government through the Controlled Substances Act. Anyone who uses street drugs or abuses uh, prescription um, and over-the-counter drugs can quickly develop a tolerance to the uh, substance. Okay, so a tolerance is when um, your body gets used to uh, the substance or the drug. Um, and as the body gets used to the drug, more and more of the drug is necessary to produce the same effect. Um, and that, in, in turn, increases the risk of overdose. So um, the chart on the top um, outlines a selection of street drugs and um, includes an extensive list of the effects of these drugs um, and the symptoms of um, their abuse. Okay, so the, top, the bottom uh, chart, the second chart outlines prescription and over-the-counter drugs. Um, it includes prescription stimulants, pain relievers, and depressants. Um, and uh, DXM, which is an, an active ingredient in both prescription and over-the-counter uh, cough medicines. Okay, and um, sorry if it's a little hard to see. Um, I'm just gonna kind of outline a few. Um, the first one, the M, uh, MDM, MDMA, um, which is a hallucinogen, um, and it's commonly referred to as ecstasy um, or molly. Um, ecstasy users can experience sweating, involuntary teeth uh, clenching, hallucinations and seizures. Um, ecstasy uses increased body temperature and heart rate, or ecstasy use increases body, body temperature and heart rate, 
Uh, Long-term ecstasy users suffer from depression, sleep disturbances, and paranoia. paranoia. Um, let's see, cocaine um, users experience an increased heart rate and high blood pressure, which can lead to heart attacks and stroke. Uh, meth uh, users um, experience many of the same effects as cocaine users. Uh, meth users may experience other effects, including skin um, abscesses and severe tooth decay, return, or referred to as uh, meth mouth. Um, chronic abuse of methamphetamine is associated, associated with numerous behavior um, effects, including mood disturbances, violent behavior, um, and as well as paranoia and visual and auditory hallucinations. Um, prescription pain relievers, okay, so pain relievers prescription on the second chart, uh, they are powerful opioids, okay, so um, when taken correctly, they can work to relieve uh, pain, but misuse um, of this prescription pain reliever can produce dangerous effects similar to those of heroin, so common effects of misuse include shallow breathing, slow heart rate, fainting, coma and can lead to death. Okay, uh, prescription depressants uh, can slow down uh, brain activity, uh, making them useful for treating, well, well prescription depressants slow down brain activity, uh, making them useful for treating anxiety and sleep disorders. Uh, these drugs are designed to regulate the chemicals in the brain that control mood, Otherwise, healthy people who abuse these drugs will dis, uh, disrupt the production of the chemicals in the brain, creating a chemical imbalance. Okay, so the effects of misusing prescription stim or depressants include slurred speech, confusion, slowed breathing, and decreased heart rate. Okay, um, so prescription stimulants. Um, doctors commonly prescribe stimulants to treat uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. Uh, these drugs are designed to correct a chemical imbalance in the brain. When used as prescribed, these drugs are effective in treating ADHD, but the abuse of prescription stimulants um, will produce effects similar to those of cocaine and methamphetamine, um, including irregular heartbeat, loss of ap appetite, intense anger, and paranoia. Okay, um, back up to the top, we have heroin, um, it, which is a powerful and addictive opioid, a uh, street drug. Uh, users quickly develop a tolerance to this drug. Uh, heroin use will uh, produce similar effects as uh, those of the abuse of prescription pain relievers, including decreased respiratory uh, a decreased respiratory rate, nausea, uh, vomiting, and drowsiness. As with other street drugs, heroin users are at a higher risk of overdose or death because there's no way to determine the strength or the true content of the drug. Um, intravenous uh, drug users also risk serious health problems, in, um, so using a needle, um, including skin abscesses, collapsed veins, and the risk of contracting um, contracting HIV or hepatitis. Um, okay, so DXM, um, which is listed below, um, is an active ingredient in both prescription and over-the-counter cough medicines, like we said before. Um, DXM has a <coughs> excuse me a legitimate medical use um, as a cough suppressant. DXM um, misuse uh, causes drowsiness, confusion, and hallucination, and also produces a psychotic episode um, or psychotic episodes that can lead to irrational and um, dangerous behaviors. So um, these drugs are um, powerful chemicals, okay? And misusing them has serious, serious negative consequences. Um, as you can see on the, the list of the negative effects. Um, the individuals, or I mean the short-term and long-term effects of the abuse of street drugs or the misuse of prescription and over-the-counter drugs are very harmful and can be fatal, okay? So it can lead to death. 
The uh, effects become more unpredictable when these drugs are cut or combined with other drugs. Okay, and when um, no, no one knows the predictability of whether um, the drug has something laced or it, there's something laced in the drug that they're taking. So again, these drugs are powerful, powerful chemicals. Uh, misusing them can have many serious negative consequences. Um, the desire to take the risk is, a, is strong during the teenage years um, because your brain is developing, still developing, um, and risk taking is, is higher as a, as a teenager due to this, um, uh, the fact that your brain is not fully developed. Um, so keep this in mind and evaluate the risks as you encounter them. Okay, take healthy risks that will push you to achieve the things you want in life. Um, and, and don't fear failure, okay? Everybody's learning, this is a learning process. Um, so take um, those healthy risks, okay? That are gonna push you to get what you want in life. Um, and be ready uh, to keep trying until you succeed. All right, so now that we've discussed the harmful um, and dangerous effects of street drugs um, and the abuse of prescription and over-the-counter drugs, um, even in the face of real harm, okay, so when teenagers know the harmful effects, some still choose to use drugs. Um, so for those few teenagers that still um, choose uh, to use drugs, what do you think uh, motivates, what, what motivates them? Okay, so maybe someone is trying to treat um, an injury or an illness um, and then it leads to abuse. Uh, maybe some, um, some are trying to fit in and belong. Okay, they may be given to peer pressure. Um, some to maybe feel older. Um, maybe to relax, okay, maybe uh, feeling stressed and instead of finding a healthy alternative and way to deal with stress, um, they take drugs to try to relax. Um, and to cope, um, maybe to take risks and rebel. Remember, the teenage brain is still developing. Um, the, the likelihood of risks um, can be greater at this time in your life. Um, and maybe to satisfy your curiosity. Um, you know, it's in our media, it's in the things that we watch, um, in the songs that we listen to. Um, so some teenagers may be just trying to satisfy that, that curiosity. Um, but in the next slide, we're gonna talk about um, ways to um, find healthy alternatives for these common rationalizations um, to use drugs. So choosing healthy alternatives to help you stay focused and um, stay focused on your goals. Um, so the common rational, rationalizations, um, you know, to um, maybe treat an injury like we talked about um, before, um, a healthy alternative would be maybe to go see a doctor, um, get plenty of rest, um, go to physical therapy, eat healthy, maybe talk to a counselor um, about your injury or your illness, um, to fit in or belong. Some healthy alternatives would be to uh, to fit in, join a club or join a, um, um, a sport, okay? Make different friends with people who don't use drugs. Um, remember, surround yourself with healthy influences. Um, volunteer, maybe at a, I'm a local charity that um, um, where you could help out and feel good about yourself um, and meet new people that have the same common um, um, goals, uh, start a hobby, maybe help organize a community event, okay? Those are ways that you can fit in and belong. Um, how about to feel older? Um, some teens um, feel like um, they need to feel older or demonstrate maturity. So a way that they could do that in a healthy way is maybe to get a part-time job, um, take more responsibility, um, at home or um, at school, and maybe set some long-term goals, okay? Goals that you will achieve as an, adu as an adult, okay? Uh, another common rationalization is to relax, okay? 
Um, so everyone needs to take time to relax so that we can be our best selves. Okay, so sometimes, um, re or, you know, choosing, not sometimes, but choosing healthy alternatives um, to relax and cope with stress would be to listen to music, watch a movie, uh, exercise, play sports, talk to friends, write in a journal. Okay, um, and how about to, um, um, uh, the unhealthy, um, um, common um, rationalization um, by taking risks and rebelling, uh, seeking thrills and a little excitement makes life fun um, and can push us to try new things. Um, but so think of healthy um, and remember reasonable risks that you could take, like maybe zip lining, okay? So safe, safe, reg safely regulated activities, skydiving, uh, white water rafting, maybe scuba dive, try another extreme sport, um, perform in a play, ask someone out, okay? There are many activities that give people the opportunity to take risks without the negative consequences of drug use. Um, and the last one we talked about is maybe to, you know, a common um, uh, rationalization that teens might have is just to s satisfy curiosity. Um, and how can you satisfy your curiosity about drugs and their effects without actually experimenting with drugs? Um, maybe research, research the drug, talk to a, a former user, interview a doctor or a professional who specializes in drug abuse visit a rehab center, okay? So it's natural to have a curiosity about drugs, um, but there are many other ways to learn about drugs and their effects and um, how drug use affects a person's life. So even though most teenagers don't use drugs, uh, you may still know someone who will choose to use drugs, okay? Um, and who do you think is more likely to notice um, another teenager's or a teenager's drug use? Do you think it's your fr their friends or their parents? Well, if you said their friends, you are correct. Um, and what do you think um, is your responsibility as a friend in this situation? So we just want to tell you that it's not your responsibility to stop a friend's drug use. Okay, your friend must make the decision to stop using. Um, however, you can show um, that you care and you can encourage your friend to stop. Okay, encouraging your friend to talk or encourage your friend to talk to a responsible adult or a professional about their drug use. Um, who are those responsible adults or the professionals um, that you could suggest? Um, well, you could suggest your school psychologist or a guidance counselor, um, maybe a coach or a teacher, okay, or a trusted adult at home. Um, so um, some professionals in your community that you could talk to, so addiction counselors, um, community agency leaders, um, like us, SCAZA here, um, we have an um, addiction and recovery center, um, and there's um, counselors to talk to, uh, advocates that you can um, call and talk to, um, psychologists and youth pastors, okay? So if you need support or aren't sure how to help your friend, um, you can reach out to these professionals as well. Um, you can also call a confidential and free national helpline um, that provides referrals to local treatment facilities uh, support groups and community-based organizations uh, for individuals and family members facing mental health or substance abuse disorders. Uh, the number um, is on the screen. It's a confidential and free national helpline, um, which is 1-800-662-HELP. Okay, so no matter what happens, um, you can be a good influence on your friend. Um, by just making healthy decisions and smart choices yourself. Congratulations, high school students. Um, you have completed um, the lessons uh, for SCAZA, um, but this is not the end, okay? So what I mean by that is that 
Um, we're hoping that the essential skills that you've uh, learned through this course um, will help you throughout your life. Um, we wish you success in life. Um, we hope that you can keep applying the skills um, every day, these skills. Um, we hope that you continue to make responsible decisions um, and avoid the consequences of drug use so that you can uh, reach your goals. Okay, you can also, or we hope that you also encourage your friends to stay healthy um, and be a positive influence for one another. Um, and, and hopefully um, you can share what you've learned um, with your friends and family. And um, we just wish you the best of luck. And thank you for uh, taking the time to complete this course. Okay, bye-bye.